Hello everyone, I'm Darcy Bono, and in this video I'm going to show you a slightly different way to paint the textured bone on the Necrolith Bone Dragon. This is the new stunning centerpiece model from the Tomb Kings of Kemri box set that is up for pre-order as of this weekend. Rather than painting my bone dragon in the traditional bone color, I opted for a more dark bluish greenish black stone color that is more similar to what is seen on the Necro Sphinx. The main reason I did this is not only because I love the idea of the polished stone constructs like the Tomb Scorpions and the Ushabdi, I love that concept, but more from an artistic standpoint, this really helps your gold stand out a lot better when it's against a dark bluish green. And this will also help your miniature stand out from the base if you plan on doing desert basing. The base for this thing is quite large, it's nearly six inches, so I thought all of that light colored bone is really gonna blend in with light colored sand. So this darker color scheme is a great option if you plan on having a lighter colored base. One thing of note before we get started, this video is just going to be on the blue black stone color. If you'd like to learn how to paint gold and bone very quickly, as well as all the Tomb King accent colors, I actually already have a video on that. There's a link in the video description. It's popping up on the screen somewhere right now, and will also be an option to click on at the very end of this video. So you're going to start with, big surprise, a black primed miniature. This one was primed using Chaos Black Spray, though any black primer of your choosing is just fine. Next, we're going to create some grayscale undershading using some round tipped dry brushes. These particular brushes are Artist Opus Series D. They provide a great gradient and really nice coverage as they are very densely packed. The shape of the brush is also important. The rounded tip is better at creating a gradient in your undershading rather than a traditional chisel tip dry brush that just catches the edges. If you don't have these, don't worry. You can get a very similar effect using just very inexpensive makeup brushes that are sold basically anywhere that sells makeup. This is an ELF eyeshadow brush. It was about $3. The main difference is it's not quite as densely packed as the Series D Artist Opus. It doesn't hold up quite as long because it's incredibly inexpensive, uh, but it does provide a very similar effect when dry brushing. So we're just going to be doing some very basic dry brushing using Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White. I prefer this white as it's much more fine grit and less chalky than other whites I've used before. I'm using the Artist Opus Series D Large as this is a fairly large component of the model. And I'm really not doing anything special. It's just a basic dry brush that brings out the highlights of the raised portions right away. But keep in mind, the more you build up this gray scale, the more white you dry brush on here, the more bluish green your end result is going to be. If you ultimately want your stone to be mostly black with just a slight bluish green tinge to it, you're going to want to use a smaller dry brush that allows you to focus this white rather than putting it all over the model. So that thinner dry brush, the ELF smudge brush, I'm using it right here, it allows you to be a bit more selective with where you apply your undershading. But for the most part, I want my stone to be fairly bluish green, so I'm doing a very heavy dry brush over everything. Now this step is completely optional. All I'm doing is adding a few pure white striations on points that I want to be the brightest color when I apply my glaze in the next step. You can still get the overall effect across without doing this. It just adds a bit more definition to the surface. We're going to be making our interesting dark stone color using equal parts Black Templar, Achillean Green, and Contrast Medium. The reason we're using Contrast Medium instead of Lamian Medium is because Contrast Medium is a bit better for making glazes. Lamian Medium causes your paints to flow quite a bit more. Contrast Medium is better for having them just sit atop surfaces rather than flow into recesses. All right, here we go, instant gratification. Look at that, boom. There's really nothing to this. I'm just applying this all over this miniature. now. Keep in mind, this is fairly textured. If you're working on a mostly smooth surface, you're going to want to be a little more careful with how you apply this. Don't just douse your miniature in your glaze. You're gonna wanna kind of swipe it back and forth as if you were icing a cupcake. But since this is so highly textured, you really don't need to worry about it too much. The only thing I caution is just watch for oversaturation at the tips of the horns. If you hold this model so that the horns are pointing downwards, the paint is going to congeal at the bottom due to gravity. You can mitigate this risk of pooling by simply keeping the skull horizontally as it dries, as well as not applying too much paint to the surface all at one time. 
As far as the brush I'm using, it really doesn't matter too much. The cheaper, the better, because I don't want to use my nice sable brushes with this much paint soaking up into the ferrules. The more paint you have in your brush, the more your bristles are going to start to splay out, and I don't want that to happen to my nice fine pointed sables. So just a cheap synthetic brush is great for this amount of glazing. And here's what it looks like once it's completely dry. Not bad for absolutely zero effort. For our final step, we're going to apply a fine highlight just so the texture stands out a little bit more. I'm going to be doing a very selective dry brush highlight using a small eyeshadow brush. And when I mean small, I mean this thing is smaller than the nail on my little finger. I also recommend using an ELF concealer brush. They're basically found in any big box store that sells makeup. They're about $2, but any small round tip brush that looks like this will work just fine. I'm going to be using Goss Blaster Green as my highlight color, but if you'd like a more blue hue to your stone, I recommend using Baharoth Blue or something similar. A very bright teal blue is perfect for this as well. So this is kind of a mix of a dry brush edge highlight. I'm using the flat part of my brush to lightly dry brush just the tips and all the portions where I want the brightest color to be. I'm not really flicking it back and forth with Reckless Abandon. I'm just lightly patting it with the flat of the brush. Now, if you're feeling saucy, feel free to highlight some of these very fine etchings in the crest. I don't recommend doing a border around the whole thing, just here and there in some portions, it just adds so much more contrast, especially in comparison to the darker areas. So a few tips when doing detail that's super fine like this, I highly recommend starting on the back of the miniature first, just for a few practice swings before moving on to the front. And keep in mind, this footage is sped up, so take your time and go slow. I highly recommend locking your elbows to your torso and propping your wrist against your desk for additional stability when doing really fine detail like this. And heaven forbid, if you make a mistake and your highlight ends up really fat, you can always correct it by just reapplying the Black Templar Achillean Green Contrast Mixture over top. That erases it pretty nicely and then you can try again. All right, our stone construct surface is complete. Now this will look infinitely better with some other colors around it. And again, I already have a video tutorial on how to do the gold and accent colors and bone of the Tomb Kings. It's in the video description and should be showing up now. One final thing before we go, if you would like this to look a bit more like polished stone, add a satin varnish to it. The right side of the skull has a satin varnish while the left side is untouched. I didn't put a matte varnish, there's nothing on the left side, but I think it looks a lot more like polished stone if you put a satin varnish on, and it also makes the shadows even darker. So I highly recommend doing that with a brush rather than an airbrush, it just gives a more intense effect. And in this case, I'm just using the newly reformulated satin varnish by Vallejo. I thin this with just a tiny bit of thinner medium as you would with any paint, just so it doesn't go on too thickly, but one of the things I love about it, other than its very smooth application, is the fact that it doesn't dry cloudy like other varnishes have in the past. It's just a very easy to work with, one and done application. So here's what it looks like with the varnish completely dried. I am really happy with this result and can't wait to finish the rest of the model. I think this is going to look really awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one if you'd like to learn a few more Tomb Kings painting tips. If you really enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, do all the things to praise the algorithm gods. And if you really enjoyed it, you can go shopping at any of the affiliate links in the video description. So treat yourself and support the channel at the same time. Thanks very much for joining me and until we meet again, happy painting everyone.